Okay, so today we'll start with the second project and we will start with multiple flow now. So I already uploaded a geometry, you can get it from Canvas. So just what you need to do is you need to import the geometry at first. So I have the geometry in my folder. So what I will do now, I will just um, import the geometry. So this is the geometry we have already in Canvas. You can download it and you can use it. So the geometry is ready. I will just double click on mesh. So this is a wide shape five. It's kind of, um, you know, just one bifurcation, um, one in light and two outlets, you know, just kind of one branch. And we're going to use this uh, for our modeling purpose, basically for the multiple flow. So, so far, we did the first project, it was only the airflow, and now we will deal with the airflow and the particles. So this is the geometry you can see here. Um, you can rotate it like this. I'll just close this one because I need that much bigger view. All right, so this is the inlet and this is to outlet. If I show you this geometry, I created this geometry in SOLIDWORKS. Um, I put a cap here and here. This is a hollow pipe. If I create the section plane, and then you can see actually how it looks like. So, like saying, if I draw it like this, okay. So, uh, I think now you can see clearly. Yes, yeah, so you see this is a hollow pipe, and but we put two caps actually at the that of this bifurcation and end of the bifurcation. So this is the geometry. Um, we'll do the name selections, all of you know this. So I'll click on that. I'll say this is our inlet. So I'll just rotate it like this. I'll click here. So I'll say this is outlet. Um, this is outlet one. And let me type it again. So this is outlet one, and we have, this is outlet two. So we have two outlets. And now what I'll do is I will just um, create the name selection for the body in the wall. You can press control A, you can rotate it like this. Click here, press uh, you know, control, click here. So that means you need to deselect that part. Oops. Um, so this on yeah and then click here you just rotate it click here press control and control so now you can see um we selected all the other parts of this geometry click right click on that and say this is the wall okay so we have done all the name selections right yes I have done the name selection. So we'll click on mesh. Um, yep, so click on mesh. We have the CFD, the solver fluent. I'll give everything as it is. I'll click on generate mesh. I'll see how it goes. So um, this mesh, um, I think it, it looks good, um, but we have this very fine mesh here because of the joining we need just develop this geometry um, due to the, you know, the strong change of the curvature we have got very small um, elements here we have large elements here so what I can do I can go to the sizing and and I can just change the curvature minimum size and the maximum size you see it is 13 millimeter and it is minimum size is 0 0.007 millimeters so I can put it like 0 0.07 maybe just I reduced one digit if I click on that, I hope I'll get no much better view here. Um, I can actually um, change weight more. Let's say I will make it 0 0.2 millimeter, the maximum, sorry, I'll keep that on. Um, so we need to actually change that. So I think it was kind of, uh, I don't exactly remember what is the size, but okay, I put it this. I need to change it here. So I'll say 0.1 millimeter. And the maximum size, I would say this is five millimeter. 
and this size i'll say this four millimeter just for example because i don't want to increase the number of cells too much um so i need to just you know make this size more um you know higher i need to just increase this size otherwise i need to decrease this size so if we reduce the difference between the maximum and minimum size then it will be um, uniform size throughout the geometry so here I'm not doing that you already know if you go through the videos all oh, yeah what i uploaded for the first project then you can get it from there because this is just for the demonstration purpose so i really don't want to increase the length of the video here and definitely for the computational time so this is the geometry what we need to do we must need the inflation layer for this case so i'll click on this one uh, this is the program control inflation i will include it then i'll click on the mesh again and i'll go to the inflation here i'll click on inflation then um you know what i'll do i'll just put it um the number of uh, layer this is the uh, the smooth transition i will say this is the program controlled and i'll say this is the 10 layers so in that way i'll click on generate mesh so let's see how it goes um so we have got the inflation, let's see how it looks like. It looks quite good. The inflation looks quite good. And uh, quickly, if you want to check the quality of the mesh, um, it's point to say, uh, okay, so we need to check the, the, the yeah, oops, this one, where is the quality? Yep. Um, we'll check the watermark quality and we'll see how it looks like. So it's not, there it's not really good it's point um to uh, point zero zero two uh, because uh, we actually need more fine mesh here uh, because it is so coarse mesh but the inflation is good so what i'm going to do i'll just go with this uh, mesh because if i try to improve this then it will be expensive and like computationally expensive and I cannot make the video in 10 15 minutes so i need to spend a lot of time but what you need to do you need to just play with the sizing here you need to make this minimum and the maximum size um you need to reduce difference between these two sizes. that means the mesh it will be uniform throughout the geometry maybe so that's um the mesh we have done now we'll click on the update projects so yeah it's updating it will take uh some time and hopefully it should be ready soon yeah but when you will generate your mesh so you need you just go through the previous video and play with the sizings and just improve it so if you only you know make the the mesh size uniform that means the difference of the minimum and the maximum size it will be very close to each other okay then you will get the uniform mesh and that will also give you the high quality all right so this is still taking some time hopefully it should be ready soon because we can see it is updating the solutions so ignore this error now click on the setup so yeah just double click on the setup uh, you will get a window like this click on the double precisions and click on instead. So once you do that, then you will get the point uh, window like this. Yep. Um, so it is updating. All right. So we can see it is still just uh, updating. So what it can do. Yep. So I'll just a moment okay, I'll keep it here and I'll make it like this. So you can see guys, this is our geometry. It is showing like this is the inlay, this is the outlet. Anyways, um what I will do, I'll just quickly show you. Um if you click on the general, then there's the options. Like you can consider it as a pressure based. Uh, density based so it should be pressure based because we have the pressure outlet to the conditions you can select the steady or the transient 
uh, steady, you know, it means the solution, it is the time dependent transient means it is related to the time. Um, we'll consider the transient case here. We'll consider the gravity. Uh, if you say like, this is our y-axis. So um, we'll see how the flow is, will go. We can, oops, so just a moment. Um, yeah, we can just check the coordinates here. Okay, I'll make it like this. Um, so this is actually our the coordinate system. So what we can see, uh, this is the jet coordinates. Uh, you see like this is the jet. So we'll put it like um, this is negative 0 point, so negative 9.81. And yep. So we will just keep it uh, a moment. Yeah, so we put it like this. Now I'll click on the models here. You can see different equations, the multiphase energy equations. So energy equations I'll show you tomorrow um, because when we will use the nanoparticles, then we need to solve the energy equations. So here, the viscous uh, model, we have the laminar or different types of model. So based on the problem, you can select uh, the laminar or epsilon k omega. So let's say initially, let me select the k epsilon realizable. We can discuss all these models um, during the you know during the class. So what I will do, I will click on okay. I'm going to use the realizable k epsilon model. We need this this. Um, discrete phase this is basically so we will solve the navier stokes equations and the flow equations from here for the fluid and we have the you know the discrete phase model here so i'll click on that and i'll click on set i'll click on create so once i will click on the create then it will give us a window like this this is very important um we need to know so if you see here, this is the injection type. You can put any name, whatever you want. Injection type. There are a lot of different options. Um, so we need to select the surface. Uh, I will discuss the other options during the class. So click on the surface. So injection means from where the particle will introduce. I will select this is from the inlet surface. Okay. You can select the materials here. What sort of materials you are just going to use. Let's say um, you have the the water liquid, so you can do that way. Or if you have, so in this case, we're using the anthracite particles. This is the inert particle. It is the unif diameter distributions. You can use the uniform diameter or you know the poly dispersed. That means different range. That means different diameter. So initially, we'll use the uniform diameter, and then. Um, what else you can do? You can just make it a little bit short. Yeah, so you just click on this the scale the plurals by the face area. That means that inlet face area and also in the normal direction. So we'll discuss it during the class. Now, um, what you can see here, you need to put some, as we said, it's transient calculation. This is the diameter. We will say this is one micrometer particle. St start size at zero second, it will stop the uh, injection, let's say 0 0.001 second. Let's say the particle velocity is three meter per second, for example, okay? So it is in meter per second. Uh, the physical model here, we have different physical models. You can use the spherical, uh, so we're, we're considering this is a spherical particle. You can select the non-spherical particles or different size. So keep it a spherical, keep everything as it is. Turbulence dispersion, we're using just the, the default model. So once uh, we have all this thing, um, now we'll click on, okay, we'll close this. If I click on this discrete phase here, um, you need to click on this interaction with continuous phase. Continuous phase is the air, and here particle is the dispersed phase. So we are going to consider the interactions between the air and the particle. We'll track the unsteady particles. So I'll uncheck this and I will select the particle uh, time steps and the particle time step size will put it as 0.001 second. 
during the class i'll explain if you what will happen if you increase or decrease this number the tracking parameters well it is by default 500 so put it is kind of more um, number that means the maximum time step size it will you know uh, you know how to you know uh, minimize the number of incomplete particles i'll show you um during the class so this is actually this particle number it increased the particle speeds during the simulations and if you use a small value like two more zero then it will take significant amount of time so i'll initially keep it as like this keep this value uh, as it is this is maximum step number i mentioned that it helps to reduce the number of um, you know incomplete particles so then click on uh, okay so i'll keep everything here as it is then i'll go to the materials uh, the fluid you can say this is the air so i'll not change anything the solid this is aluminium so i'll not change anything there the inert particles so maybe you are just solving some particle with different properties and they have different density we are talking about the particle so density is the most important particle let's say it is a water droplets kind of um, 1000 that's the density so click on create and you can set it if you want here is the fluent database so you can select load particle from here yeah so there are a lot of um, particle you have so we'll not do that so this is the first part um now i will stop the recording here and in the second part we'll see the the remaining setup and how to run the simulations